thing I wanted to mention, uh, when Carolyn was talking about filling out your cards for your heart culture, how important that is to fill it out correctly. As judges, we look to make sure you have a botanical name. And it has made a difference before in someone winning a top award and not winning a top award. If you do not have the botanical name and you, play, you score a 95 or above, you may not get that top award because you didn't have the botanical name written down. Uh, the difference in botanical and family is just the letters at the end of the word. A-C-E-A-E. -E. If you see that at the end of any word, that means it's a family name. It's not the genus. You always put the genus first and then the species. I'm not going to go into underlining and quotations because that's really a completely another program. And it gets confusing if you're not familiar with it. But genus would, Rosa, R-O-S-A, would be your rose. Uh, begonia is the genus for begonia. If you have a bromeliad and you put bromeliacea, acmea, that is the family name. You would put bromeliad, acmea. Is everyone kind of clear on that? Make sure you don't use A-C-E-A-E. That's at the end of the word for our botanical name because that is family. Now you can also put the common name, but always put it second. Uh, you don't have to have the common name, but you may have the common name. And your genus and your species is botanical and it always goes first. Family goes, I mean, um, common goes second if you want to use the common name. Does anyone have a question on that? Because it's real important. Okay, everyone got a handout. Did everybody get a handout? On, uh, some of you have this as the first page. Some of you have it as a second page. But it is the elements and uh, principles of design. It's just a short uh, explanation of what each one of them are. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because of time, but look on the part, this part right here, yes. So you have a like you're holding, or yes, everybody should have gotten one. Does everybody have one? Some of them may have, some of them may have this top part cut off and it may just look like this, but you should all have one of these and you should all have the uh, elements and principles of design, a very short explanation of what they mean. The reason I'm showing you this, this you do not see a judge walk around with this in their hand. But this is what they use to judge your design with. And as judges, we have to take tests all the time. It takes nine, a minimum of nine years to become a master judge. And we still have to go to school and we still have to refresh and we still have to take tests. This is the sheet that we use, and we actually have to use this sheet when we take our test. It's a point scoring sheet, and we have to judge your design. And these are the points that each part of your design uh, we can give you. For conformance, conformance means the very first one, there's 20 points. You're allowed 20 points for conformance. That means, did you conform to your schedule? your schedule requirements. Did you do a design that your schedule said that you were supposed to do? I think y'all have a fantastic schedule. It's freestyle. That means you can do anything you want to do. Now, did you do a freestyle design? Well, we judge and see if you did. And 99% of the time, you're going to do what, uh, what your schedule said. The other, that's 10 points. The other part of that conformance, let's say, in your schedule, you're giving 
uh, dimensions like 30, uh, 30 inches deep and maybe 30 inches wide. Well, if you have, um, if you have a design, an 8 inch or a 10 inch design setting on the table with a big, with a design in it, your proportion is, is not going to be correct. So they're going to take points off for proportion <coughs> under conformance. The next box is designed 42 points. Each one of these principles of design, balance, dominance, contrast, rhythm, all of these, there's seven of them in here, I mean six of them in here, each one of those counts seven points. So a total of your uh, Design points would be 42. Now you may have one thing that's wrong and they may only count one point off out of that whole box. And we'll go into that as we start talking about the designs. Artistic effect is real important. 12 points. It's the components that you used in your design that tells the judge what that design is. The expression. This is whatever design you're doing, did you use components that express that? And the way we do, you know, if, you, if we walk up to here and we see a design and it's a freestyle, we have no idea what you're trying to, to tell us. So we're sitting there trying to think, what is she saying? What is she trying to do? So we, we make it mandatory in our schedules to use a three by five card to explain your design to us. You don't have to, and your schedule does not require that, but that also could, could uh, cause you not to get a top award because we don't know what you're doing. We don't know what you're trying to express according uh, to your theme. Distinction. Distinction is what we do is all of the points that was taken off at the top of any of these categories, we have to divide that by four. Isn't it four, Betty? Say, for instance, if we took four points off at the top, we'd have to take one point off at the bottom. If we took six points off at the top, we'd take two points off at the bottom. And that gives you your score. And you want to try to score 95 or above, because 95 or above puts you into your top section award. Your, uh, has any of you looked at your schedule real quickly? You have a really good schedule. I mean, it's just open to whatever you want. Your tile is along the garden path. So along the garden path, what are you thinking? You can do anything you want to do, anything. Your first class is serendipity at the turn. So serendipity is when you make that turn in that garden path, oh, it's a surprise. You could have a tropical garden. You could depict a uh, rock garden, a cactus garden, an Asian garden, a water garden, uh, a bulb garden. It's a surprise. It can be anything that you want it to be. This first design, what does that look like to y'all? Does it look tropical? Does it look Asian? Does it look tropical? Asian. It could, well, Asians use a lot of tropical. You could have orchids in it. But I would have a card out here and I would talk about this design. I, I was going to call it an Asian design. And I'm going to tell the judges that it is an Asian design. This next one is a sculpture's touch. That was a little hard for me. I thought, a sculpture, oh Lord, what am I going to do? What am I, am I going to use a uh, a bird bath? Am I going to use a, uh, an angel, a sculpture? Uh, what this actually, this was a, uh, an umbrella stand and I took it apart and reassembled. Can you imagine this as being a big sculpture in a garden? And I would, uh, I would probably call this a children's garden because the sculpture in the garden, it represents like the, the slope could represent the children skating on the skate, using skateboards. The holes could represent uh, 
children splashing water from the wading pool. The straight lines could represent children running. So I would explain something about this design on my 3 by 5 card and, and it could be that the birds are watching the children play in the children's garden. Uh, the next one, birds of flutter. Uh, that kind of stumped me for a minute. I thought, well, now what am I going to do? Birds of flutter. I, well, I know I can use bird of paradise. What else could I do? You can use feathers as long as they're not artificial. You can use real feathers in a design. You could do a something like this over here and use feathers. Uh, in your handbook, uh, do all of you have a handbook? In your handbook in the back it has designs and it tells you all of the designs that you can do like an underwater design, uh, a creative line design, a hanging design, an exhibition type table design. And so what I chose in this garden where birds are fluttering I chose a uh, exhibition table type 2, which you do not use a complete design. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to stop along the, the garden path and I'm going to have lunch and uh, I'm going to watch the butterflies feed off of the perennial garden. So this is the perennial garden and the butterflies are fluttering their wings and they're uh, feeding off of the perennials. And I'm going to tell the judge that. Uh, in the design. Does anyone have any questions at this point? What about the plant material? In this design. Yes. In a uh, exhibition type 2, remember you don't have to have a complete design. This is not a design. This is grass. Dried. It's been dried. Anytime you dry... Okay. It, it, it's grass. Uh, like in the swampy area. Now if, say for instance, if I <coughs> did something like this and then I might take some leaves and do this and I'm making a design and you don't want to do that. One uh, flower or plant in a container does not make a design. This is not a design. When you uh, use like dried flowers or anything dried, do you have to use all of it dried? No. Or you can put fresh with it? There is a uh, section award. It's called uh, Award of Distinction. If you have that, if you're giving that particular award, you do have to use all dried. That's the only one. You cannot do a pot de fleur. That's something else I want to mention. You cannot do a pot de fleur in anything but a tricolor. That was something that Carolyn and I had talked about. Um, and a pot de fleur is, is, a, is potted plants or a combination of potted and stem, stem flowers. Let me, I want to show you something with this particular design. I'm going to, we're going to talk about uh, some of these elements and principles. This container is a toilet tissue holder. Okay, we've got this right here. What do you see? Or what do you don't see? Okay, everything is right here. Does your eye stay right here or does it move up? So this becomes dominant. Is it too dominant? At this point, it's too dominant. You don't have anything to bring your eye up. So this is dominant. We're going to count. I'm real lenient. I only count off one point for everything all the time. <laughs> Some judges would count off three points for this. Okay, so that is, and it's too dominant because your eye stays back right there. If it's too dominant also, is it visually balanced? Okay, so you've got a point taken off for visual, for, because it's not visually balanced. You've got a point taken off for dominance. And rhythm, rhythm is where your eye goes all the way through, like you're dancing all the way through and all the way around and all up and down in the design. You, because it's dominant and it's too dominant, it still stops right here. If 
by adding this glass, maybe, What we're doing is we're going to bring collar all the way up to the top to it, which gives you rhythm and also creates line. Okay. Now when you look at this, does your eye go all the way up and all the way down? Okay, now line. And our saying is if there's no line, there's no design. Line can be uh, at a diagonal, it can be vertical, it can be horizontal, it can be round, it can be a triangle, it can be uh, uh, zigzag, it can be uh, an S curve. So, can you see the line? A line can be uh, color, it can be uh, forms, it can be, you always, you always want to repeat color and you always want to uh, have a contrast in forms and shapes and textures. So, line in this, you have brown, you have brown, you have brown. You can come this way and back around or you can come like this. Your brown, a lot of people may say, well, it's, it's just forms. You've got round, 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 round. But ba I think your line is the brown. In contrast, contrast, you want to, uh, contrast in shapes. You have rectangular, you have circles, circle, vertical, diagonal, vertical, uh, there's contrast in forms and there's contrast in color. Can you, do you see that? you have any questions? Okay, let's move on to this one. I didn't complete this. What I wanted to show you uh, was how to open a bird of paradise. This was really, really, really tight. And I thought, uh, this one was pretty tight and I tried to open it and I broke it. This, usually you don't find them this tight, so I tried to start opening a little bit of it to show you. You see the sheaf on top? Or you just keep playing with it till you find where you can find a place to open it a little bit. I may break this one, it is really tight. I asked for a tight one and I got one. <laughs> but you just find that little opening and you just run your, I like to run my thumb underneath, but it is tight. Uh, sometimes they will tell you to put, put them in warm water to open them. Do not do that. What happens is when you put them in warm water, and then you're still going to have to open it some, and they look like they're rotten. They will be really brown. If they've, evidently they've never tried it. But you just, you look for that, the two sides, and you just keep opening. And you try to get all this open up underneath. And then you start really gently. See, there's still, there's still some in this. The blue's going to be in there. And it may not... Uh, I had to open this one. And see, whenever a judge walks up and sees this, I, you, you've, uh, you design enough and you see enough, to, I know that this is an immature plant. <coughs> and when I look at this, and believe me, the, 
your plant material counts off. I'm going to keep working for this as I talk. Look at that vermilion, I mean that uh, bird of paradise on top. You get counted off if it's, uh, no, not necessarily. I wouldn't count off for that. This up here, I, there's scarring here. Uh, the tips are a little brown. Uh, this top sheath is gone. Uh, actually, I broke this off trying to open it, and I took a straight pin and put, put, uh, put in the piece that I broke off, and then I put the other in in the body and that will hold it but a judge would see that so you would try to cover this with plant material your plant material is really really important this is really tight I don't even know if I'm going to be able to so the, if you have, it should have the three phases it should have yes this one's Uh, Bird of Paradise, these last a long time. It may take a week for this to open. As tight as these are, when you, when you uh, order your plant material, and when you order them, if you're going to order Bird of Paradise, you ask them, and they're not going to know. They're not going to know what they're going to look like when they come in. I always order my Bird of Paradise early. I order my... Uh, Gladiolas early. Uh, gladiolas, I will bring home. I'll get them early. I may get them five to six days early if they're tight. And uh, I put a light over them for them to open. But I never put them in hot water. I put, in fact, I put ice in my water. I would be afraid to do that. You don't know the age of the of the uh, of the plant, and by doing that, you could. No, I wouldn't do that. Uh, I didn't realize this was going to be this tight, or I would not have done this. It's taking up too much time. Um, but I do that. Uh, your plant material is real important, like these uh, red anthuriums. When you get up close to them, they're scarred. They have brown spots on them, and uh, you would count off for that. And, and they count off a lot for uh, plant material that's not in good shape. In that container, I try to when I do programs, I try to use containers that's easy for you to get. I'm going to have to tear this one. Um, that is one of those uh, water fountains that you have uh, sitting on a table at home. Mm -hmm. And the pump was gone out of it, and I got it for $15. And I look for things like that. Uh, these are Melendo sticks, and I'll have some of those uh, for sale. That's not going to, I'm not going to be able to open that without tearing it. So don't get one that's really, really tight. When you do, get one that's kind of, this had already started opening a little bit. Because um, when you, even if you try to open it, it's immature. See how, see how what, the colors are not, are, are not right? And a judge is going to know that. Something else that we learn at, at a and is when you, when you're using Bird of Paradise, Jim Johnson says never turn them out, never turn one in and one out. Always have your birds where they're looking at each other. He says they're talking. Have them to where they're talking to each other. Now I have seen designs and I've seen designs in books where you may have these two going this way and this one's going out. But just stop and think. If, you've got, if this one was turned the other way, what you're doing is you're pulling the eye out of the design. So always keep your plant material to where it kind of goes back into the design. Uh, in a flower show, I used plain asperdister leaves and I used variegated flax. Are y'all familiar with that? 
and I took strip variegated flax, it's real, real yellow. And I took the flax and cut it and I glued it to the, uh, with U glue to the solid color green. And it just gave it a little bit more dimension and it uh, uh, was just a little bit more color than what you see here. And this was a different uh, plant material that I can't get right now this time of the year. But this is just, <coughs> these are variegated aspergillus leaves and you notice the color. It's not as good this time of the year as it usually is. But what, the way I did that, Betty did this for me. We're going to pretend that this is a flax. And she just used U-glue, uh, which is those little glue dots, and glued it to the stem. She just cut it and glued it to the stem. And then all I did there was just... Do I have another one of these? Yeah, I can just, all I did there is I just, you just cut. And that was just simple. But another thing that you can do with this, didn't do this ahead of time. Let me see if I can do it. You just make slits in your leaf. All up and down your leaf, ever how far you want it. And you take, can take anything that's variegated. So you can do something like this, but you could do it all the way down and you can make me make more, more of a uh, slits in it. And you see a lot of your older designers doing uh, 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 abstract or manipulation like this. Another thing in this one, instead of using very, uh, the solid leaves, you could maybe use soft this color leaf. That's kind of pretty. Does anyone have any questions about anything? Let's say for instance, uh, if you didn't have this up here, see your eye stays right there, doesn't it? But by putting one up here, it brings the eye up and that's just glued to the board. Uh, you do not have, a, have to have a water source for Aspergillus, uh, Bird of Paradise, um, Anthuriums. They do not need a water source. That means you do not have to put them in wet oases or in a water tube. What did you put yours into? Is it a clay? I mean, a this one? Mm -hmm. This is in a frog pen. Y'all okay. know what frog pens are? which I could have water and if I was going to do a show I'd probably have water in it. Uh, something else I wanted to talk to y'all about was underlays. I noticed in your shows you don't always have underlays and it's not necessary that you have them. If, you're, you're, if your schedule does not specify whether you can or cannot use an underlay, you can. Uh, if it specifies that you do have to have an underlay, we do not, never put your underlay on the, below the uh, table. In other words, don't have it hanging over. Yours may be hanging over and this one may not, and it's just good for the show to have an overall appearance of them at least coming to the edge of the table. Something else, one other thing, depth. This is a pretty flat container. I call it a container or a unit. If you have that sitting just like that, there's no depth to that. So you can create depth. See, there's not just a very little maybe right here. So a way you can uh, create depth with your design is by turning it. Just turning it a little bit. 
And a judge is supposed to stand, she's not supposed to come up like this, but you'll see them that'll do this. She's supposed to stand at least three feet and judge your design. And the same way with, uh, same way when you do uh, a table, you never want it to be facing. She's going to stand out here. It looks flat. You just see that. And to me, it makes the plate look more dominant. Mm -hmm. So if you turn it a little bit, you're going to give it some depth. And she's going to stand three feet. And that plate is not as dominant as if it was just face right in front of you. Same way here. There's not a whole lot of depth here. If you face it flat in front of you, it tends to be a little flat. There's just a little bit sticking out here in the back. Yes? On the judging, you're saying that they're supposed to stand back at some down. Could we put a tape measure on three foot? Yes. Well, no, we've done, we do that with our pedestals, but we do it with our pedestals because we don't want anyone bumping into our designs. But if you do that, you may have, there's always one judge or maybe two that's not going to like that. And two, the appearance of your show is not as attractive if you do something like that. Now, if you have pedestals that are out in the center, or if you have these capsule tables, do y'all do capsule tables? We have the little capsule tables uh, and sometimes we will put uh, something around those to keep people from bumping into them and breaking somebody's dishes. But by turning this again, you're going to create depth. <coughs> if you're standing three feet. Then you may have Somebody might have already judged your uh, exhibit and they may go up here because they want to look at what kind of plant material you used. Or they may want to see how you did something. I'm going to show you, uh, if you ever use Melendo sticks, they're just, you can just pass that around, they're real flexible. This one is glued down. But you start them off, to make them uh, separate, you kind of start them off staggering them. And then you take the other end and you make them all the same size. And that will give you this, uh, this look like that. But they're, they're, all, they're a little flexible. Yes, ma'am. I'm just learning. That's okay. <laughs> Betty's here to help me. Oh, bunch it up. Uh, you can, and we used to do a, a lot of that, but you don't see that as, as much anymore. And But some of your judges, the newer judges, they'll, they may walk up and say, oh, well, you don't do that anymore. Right. Well, that doesn't mean that you don't do it anymore. My philosophy is whatever looks good for your design, right. I'm just, I'm real lenient. And I like to see things that look like it goes together, not like it's just, I put it there because I, I, I wanted to, because I had an extra one, or because yeah. of. You don't want, you never want your plant material, you never want your underlay, you never want your container, you never want anything to go into someone else's space. Sure. That they will count off big time. You never want, uh, your design to touch your backboard. If you use the backboard, do not let your plant material touch your blackboard. Oh, uh, your backboard. They will count off for that. Like yes, Th that is considered a, a a material, a plant material. It's it's uh, it's fiber. It's, and you can mix that with fresh plant material, and you can mix it with dry plant material. You can mix those together. Bring I'll, I'll bring it. I'll bring it in March. 
But I only have, I have uh, red, uh, a neutral color, and I have a uh, apple green and a uh, kind of a yellowy color, I think. No, you can only get, Yondi can probably get that for y'all. I sell it at cost. It co it's $13.95 for a bundle of $200. And I, I separate the bundles into $100 a piece and sell them for $7. Because you don't need $200. You can paint them. You can't, you, they. What are they called? Molindo sticks. Molindo. M O L I N D A, I think. And we've learned to weave these at a &M. There's all, thing, all kinds of things that you can do with these. And in the Vision of Beauty books, you'll see several designs that they've used Melindo sticks in. Well, if, you, uh, if it's torn, they'll count off. Well, maybe if, spot, you know, like if it doesn't look like it belongs there, they will count off. Yeah. If it looks, if it, uh, say for instance, you can dry in theriums. Well, see, this is torn. They would count off. If it had a big spot in here, they'd count off. You can paint there. them. <laughs> character. <laughs> character. Character. I don't think they're going to like what I do. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm rusty. <laughs> Betty and I have a really bad problem. She, Betty, is, I didn't tell oh, about you, did I? <laughs> well, I do too. I love everything. Oh, yeah. in the, I was over at a lady's house uh, the other, <laughs> and I and I there I went. Oh, she said, "What is it?" I said, "Oh, look at that leaf." Oh, <laughs> she I said, "Well, know. now you can have it if you want." <laughs> Terrible. Uh, but Daddy is she is a student judge now. We have to go to four schools, and and uh, she has to take a test and write her schedule, and she will be a full pledge judge. And she's been in our club three years, Betty, maybe. I'd like for you to be our judge. <laughs> <laughs> Betty is doing a fan. Oh, she's going to be our judge. You're going to have six yes. judges. Oh, okay. You have three on a panel. All right. And the ones that you have coming are super, super knowledgeable right. and super nice. Every one of them are really, really nice. And they all work really well together. Uh, but Betty, she is, she is eligible to judge now. So she does judge. <laughs> and she's, she has excellent questions, and she reads this book like she's reading a novel. She reads her NGC book, so I, I told her on the way, I said, Betty, I'm going to have to start asking you for questions because you forget if you don't stay in your book. That's right. And she has great questions. Uh, no, I don't need a plug. I need a, I don't have a flower. Say, for instance, if you had a, a gladiola. Gladiolas are real good. Or if you had a, uh, a, a, a liatris or, or a, a flower that had flowers up and down the stem. Because you want to try to hide as much as you are of your wire as you can. Look at that, uh, Carolyn. This is what you want to try to eat. <laughs> okay. I'm looking. This is what you want to try to use. Uh, Oh, little bitty lights. Uh -huh. oh. So you don't want any, you don't want anything real dominant. You don't want your lights to be dominant. And what I do is I start at the top. I start at the top of my flower. I've got some that I got you and um, it's stiff. The wire's stiff. Oh, it, no. It's real bendable. And you want to try to hide it in your blooms. You know, you want to do, try so that to. you don't see the wire. So you, what you're doing is you're trying not to see the wire. This is not a good example, but. Be careful with a color. Be careful with a color. You don't want, you try as much as you can. See, she's going to be three feet apart. If you can't hide black, it could show. Uh, but you just, I think you have the idea. Okay. Now say, now say if you, well, you're going to, it's going to be in your vase or in your container. So what you're going to, you have all this left over. Well, you may have another flower here or just remember when you get start you don't want any of this showing 
And what you, if you're using all dried material, you can put this down in your container. If you're not, a lot of times what we do is we take it, you don't even want to sit it, so you don't want to sit it like this because you've got judges, there's three judges. They're supposed to be in front, but you're going to have judges like this, you're going to have judges like this, but when they make their final decision, all three of them have to look at it from three feet in front. They shouldn't judge your design from the side. So you don't want this to show. So what you would do is you're going to take, you can take industrial strength Velcro at Walmart or someplace, and you put it on your container and you put this Velcro it to where it won't sing. So if there's water, if there's water, you know. Now if there's not water, if it's all dried, you can put it in it. Well, you want to try to bring, it's there again, it's line. You want to try to bring your eye all the way through, up and down. I wish I, I should have brought that picture of that one. Um, and that's rhythm. Do you kind of understand rhythm? See, line, this is line. You're creating a, a diagonal line here. You've got, you're creating a line. This is actually multi-rhythm. We won't go into that, but you're creating a line. And rhythm is just, you know, you're, you just, your eye just goes all the way through it and all the way up and down. Goes all of this. It just goes all, all there and all comes all the way back. Your eye follows the line and it comes around. Multi-rhythm is where you have two lines, uh, a continued line and a, an interruptive line. But your eye just goes all the way through that. It doesn't just stop somewhere and, and stare and you just you keep your eye. You need dominance. This red is dominant, but it's not too dominant because your eye goes all, all the way through it. Your bird, bird of paradise, what's dominant? The bird of paradise is dominant, but your eye still goes all the way through your design. Okay, I want to thank you all for having me. You're always such a lovely group. It's always uh, a pleasure coming, and Betty even mentioned, she said, oh, these ladies are nice. <laughs>